of it, the whole insane mess. Of course, when it first broke, it was strictly strap airs, baby. Nobody could get near it. Cover it with glory, they thought. Ha! Huh. But yesterday, Lieutenant General Claypool decided it was too hard for him to handle. So while my back was turned with a new laundry project, something really exciting, by the way, well, Lieutenant General Claypool and my good friend, Major Conrad Spotty McClellan, are sitting there in the Chief of Staff's air-conditioned office, sucking up to him, to those damn civilians. Yes, Mr. Secretary. No, Mr. Secretary. It's only invasion from Mars or something, Mr. Secretary. So why not let good old Tom Powers handle it? Of course, if he goofs, he can always be sent back to Panama. Oh, I'm sorry, Roger. I shouldn't be talking like this, but they mean to destroy it's okay, me. okay, Tom boy. I didn't understand the word you said. What has been dumped in your lap? UFO, unidentified flying objects, flying saucers. Right to the top, Rod. Playful knows damn well I came up for promotion to permanent brigadier general in January and- A flying saucer? Oh, come off it, tomboy. As I prove on my television audience tonight, there just ain't no such animal. No, sir, no such animal. Two days ago, an unidentified object appeared in the Earth's atmosphere. For the last 12 hours, it has been observed over Washington and the part of Virginia. Are you sure this isn't an Air Force stunt? You know, get a bigger pr appropriation out of Congress. Roger, I've seen the thing myself. Optical illusion, mass hysteria. Now, Roger, this is strictly confidential. I'm telling you this as an old and trusted friend, not as a, a television commentator. Whatever it is, it's real, Rog. But yes, if it's, it's on the radio. But if it's real, Tom, my telecast, it's on film in just 15 minutes. <coughs> I'll be telling mother and father America that there ain't no such. Oh my God, I'll call the studio. I'll make an announcement. No, I'm sorry, Roger. No, no. This is classified pending final clearance as top secret. Suppose I break the story anyway. It's a free country. You'd be indicted under the revised Espionage Act. I'm sorry, Roger. Get me New York. Oh my goodness, if it isn't Tom Powers. Well, I would never have recognized you from the Harvard Business School. All filled out and everything, and an admiral, too. I wouldn't have recognized him. He's a general. He's in the army. Gosh, it's grand to see you, Reba. Really grand. Why, Roger, this little lady hasn't changed an iota in 20 years. Oh, Tom, that's not true. <laughs> anyway, come on upstairs, and I'll show you to your room. And oh, I'm sorry, Reba. Can't stay. Just passing through. They expect me in Manassas, <coughs> 1900. He's on a mission. A mission? In Virginia? <laughs> and I thought you were here to see us. Roger, where's Alan? I want him to meet Tom. You see? Oh, he's off somewhere with, with, with Conrad, the boy farmer. Well, you come tonight anyway, and we'll have a real reunion. I'll tell you what I'll do, Reed. I'll do my best. Roger, it's grand seeing you, but remember, that flying saucer business is top secret. Flying saucers? Oh, but there aren't any flying saucers. Roger says there aren't any. In fact, he's going to talk about tonight the fact they're all in your mind. Uh, look, will you folks come out here, please? You see, way up there, to the left of that tree, not on the right, to the left of the tree. Well, that's it. Well, I see something up there after all. I, I can't see a thing. Well, Roger, you've got your reading glasses on. <laughs> Just take them off. Oh, yes, of course. That's exactly what it looks like. A unidentified flying object. 
and it's mine, all mine. And I was so happy in the laundry corps. Well, that's the way the ball bounces. <laughs> now, don't forget, tonight, dinner date. Mass hysteria. A simple case of mass hysteria. Well, it's really rather pretty, whatever it is. Roger, do you think Ellen's sleeping with Conrad? <laughs> there must be some way of killing the broadcast. Well, if she is, I just hope they don't do anything silly. <laughs> you know, like getting married. Maybe I could get him to run an old film, one of those open letters to American moms, or one of those damn tolerance things. Oh, it's not that I don't like Conrad, I do. But Ellen must finish college. No, too late to get union clearance. <laughs> Roger, I wish you'd pay more attention to your daughter. You never talk to her. She could hear me on television three nights a week, <laughs> if she'd take the trouble. It can't be a flying saucer, it just can't be. My father always talked to me. He used to read aloud, too. This is going to be another Thomas E. Dewey. I can see it coming. And when you've got Tendrix like mine, you've got enemies waiting for you to fall on your face. Nine years, and they still haven't forgotten. Millions of Americans heard the progress, the broadcast. Congratulations, I said. Congratulations, President Dewey. <laughs> My father met Dewey just once, but it was right after he came back from Manila. And tonight, Mother and Father America, take it from yours truly, Roger Spelding. There ain't so such an animal. <laughs> <laughs> There's some terrible force driving on and on. Oh, you just must restrain that terrible force because I'm getting prickly heat again. See? See it? Where? All up and down. Oh, that's not prickly heat. That's me. I didn't shave. Conrad, <laughs> don't. You're disfiguring me. I wonder who that was with Daddy just now. I thought I heard him say. Yeah, I don't see how anybody can make love and. Really stop at the same time. Do one or the other, but don't. Okay, well, it's awful the way I'm always doing two things at once. Sometimes three. I like this. And I know it. They think I'm shallow at Bryn Mawr. Well, I find you charming in your shallow way. Oh, you're sweet. Oh, hell, the goat. I gotta go home. Keep time for her medicine. I'm beginning to resent that goat. It's not her fault she's sick. She resents me. <laughs> now, Oh, 
find the college degree, and I want a little diamond tiara, you know, like they wear in the ballet. How did you say? <laughs> oh, I want to be simple, Sue. I think perhaps that's the one thing I really am and don't know it. We could have such a wonderful life over there on the roof, farm, and you'd be right next door to your father, who hates me. Oh, you're quite <laughs> sensitive. He hates me. Oh, no, darling. He dislikes you. But he doesn't <laughs> like anybody. So that's why he's such a wonderful news analyst. Oh.